Behind the Shades. We know we haven't got it all together, but honey, you don't have to worry. We're committed to each other. I think kids need that reassurance to hear that from their parents. Can that be scary for the parents to have that type of conversation with the children? Uh, that was very surprising to this couple because they knew they had confidence in themselves, but because these children had seen their their peers uh, struggle in their parent, the, their parents were separating. That was very, very surprising for this couple. And no, it wasn't scary because um, they had some degree of vulnerability with their kids in that way. And it was a good conversation to have with their kids. And they were glad that their kids asked the question. So their question, are we in trouble? Are we okay? Are you okay? Are you going to be together? Are you leaving each other? That was really important to have that conversation. So these parents had obviously created a safe space for their kids to ask the hard questions. And it shows that the children care and it shows that maybe there's an understanding that they can have those, as you mentioned, adult conversations. Because the last thing you want is the child to leave, maybe go to school, thinking everything is fine. And then when they come back home, it's not fine. And I think we underestimate at times the impact that the adult relationship has on the children because we think that they're invincible. Well, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to show the pain so the children won't pick up on it. But children are pretty intuitive, right? Oh, my goodness. It's the mood in the room, right? <laughs> it's the mood in the room. And when, when mom and dad aren't getting along, kids feel it before they see it. They feel it and they feel it in their bodies and they feel it and they feel it in their emotions and they feel that tension and it can be like walking on eggshells. So even though you may not say it, they can feel that tension. And so, yes, I think that kids are very intuitive and kids pick up on far more than their parents. I always said my kids were way smarter than I was when they were very little. <laughs> they pick up on those little nuances that we think they don't see. And so it's important to have those conversations with our kids to, um, to, I think that we need, to, I think that we as adults need to be adults in the relationship and not expect our kids to be the adults in the relationship. And I think sometimes the adults expect kids to be the adult in the relationship. And I think that's not fair to kids. So, and I absolutely agree because I think that there has to be that separation, but you still want an honest and transparent household. And when we're speaking of that, what are some of the stumbling blocks that you have encountered? Maybe either you're for yourself in your situation, or maybe when you're helping others. Hmm. I think there are reasons why we put off or struggle with these important pivotal conversations. I think one of the reasons I see my women are extraordinarily kind terrain. They are kind hearted, agreeable people. And so they don't like conflict. And in many places they've been taught, especially in church to be the nice, good girl. And so dealing with conflict just doesn't line up with their church's idea of of be of a woman. And so they want to keep the peace and they don't have those conversations. I think another reason why we don't have those conversations is because of the vulnerability piece. It can be hard. It can be risky. And the deeper we go uh, in communication, the more vulnerable we become. And so for instance, if I am just talking to you about facts, that's not so that's not so threatening or so risky. But when I start to tell you about how I feel and what I really want, that's when it gets to be vulnerable. And that can be hard to do and scary because what if I tell you what I want and you don't respond in that way? And I remember the first time I asked my husband for a hug, Duran, it was so, so comical. He walked, I was having a bad day and he looked at me and he said, like, what's wrong? What's going on? And he said, I said, I just need a hug. And he walked over and gave me a hug. And I thought, why have I waited so long to ask him for what I need? Because that was really easy. 
<laughs> but it felt so vulnerable. And that's one of the reasons why I think we put off having that pivotal conversation. Uh, I think another reason is that we, my women don't always know what to say. And women are busy. They're wearing a lot of different hats and they don't spend too much time looking into themselves. And we talked earlier about the listening piece and how we often don't have those places where we're listened to. And so we often don't go within and don't know what's really going on inside. And so I can't tell you who I am, what I'm thinking and what I'm feeling and what I want if I don't think about it first. And so one of the reasons why we put off those conversations is because we just don't know what to say. And another reason why those we put off those pivotal conversations is because they haven't gone well in the past. And I think there's an expression that says, you know, once bitten, twice shy. And so when it hasn't gone well in the past, um, we hesitate. We're afraid to step into it again. But, you know, the good news is that, you know, pivotal conversations, there's skills that we can learn. And once we learn the skills, we can get better at having these pivotal conversations. And then people even expect it. I am sure that as we're talking, Terrain, you're thinking about the people in your life that are really good at these pivotal conversations. My brother is really good at pivotal conversations. It's, it's the way he does life. And so they can really become a way of life. And people will then expect it of you. And when we practice it, we get better at it too. Thank <laughs> you.